Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch, this is another Raid Shadow Legends video, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. We are currently on the test server guys, and I gotta say, I've never had such a train of emotions with a champion as I had with this one, okay? And I gotta say another thing, I haven't been as excited for a champion to be released in Raid Shadow Legends, probably for over over 10 uh over 12 months okay over one year since they released georgie taras uh and marichka okay when i read this champion's kit i was like wow wow oh my god this champion is going to be absolutely amazing and it felt like it was a roller coaster because i instantly messaged uh, somebody from Platinum and i was like finally guys you are finally bringing a champion that will bully taras without nerfing him okay a champion that will put Taras in his place. Fatalis Blade Master. Now, I don't want to influence your opinion, guys. I don't want to rant. I don't want to do anything like this. So I'm going to let you make your own opinion based on the showcase, based on what you're going to see in today's video. Now, Fatalis has a very, very good uh, kit on paper, and he has some very good stats, okay? 23,000 HP. 1.2k defense, almost 1.3k defense. They are defense-based champions in the game that have a lower base defense than this HP champion. 104 speed, pretty good too, you know. And overall, he looks super, super amazing. Now, this is a cross crossover champion uh, in collaboration with Mo uh, Monster Hunter. Is basically a new champion joining grade with uh, Monster Hunter armor. He does look amazing though. The basic skill attacks an enemy, ignores 15% of the target's defense if the attack is critical, also has a chance to grant an extra turn. The A2 attacks one enemy, will ignore strengthen, stone skin, increased defense, and ally protection buffs. Also ignores 15% of the target's defense if this attack is critical. Plus decreases the attack uh, on a target by 10%, stacking up to 30%. So 3 hits, bang you decrease the attack uh, by 30%. Of course, it needs to be with this skill. Now, if you're looking at the books, it gets a lot of damage. 30% damage from uh, all of the skills when you book him. That's a lot of damage. Then you have the A3, strong white slash. Attacks all enemies. Ignores 15% of the target's defense if this attack is critical. Decreases the target's defense by 5%. Stacking up to 30, even better. You decrease the defense as well. And this is on a three turn cooldown AoE skill. Then you have a secret skill, guys, okay, which should be super, super nice. True charge slash attacks one enemy. Will ignore 50% of the target's defense. Fills this champion's terminator by 50% if the attack is critical. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be decreased by enemy passive skills or masteries except by the passive skills of bosses. Hello, Taras, we're not gonna give a damn about your passive, okay? Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be increased by either these champion's masteries or ally passive skills, except when attacking bosses. Now, this is a secret skill, and it only becomes available when any three of these champion skills were used in a round. So, A1, A2, A3, bang, you have the secret skill available. Then, of course, we have the passive, Places a shield buff on this champion equal to 25% of their max HP for two turns at the end of their turn. This champion cannot receive critical hits while under a shield buff placed by this champion. So it means that if you start the run uh, and the enemy only has one nuker, it will basically almost never crit you unless he has a lot of multi-hits like a Kutraxa, you know, and she breaks the shield quick. Or if they have multiple nukers. Uh, because this champion, as soon as he takes a turn, bang, he puts a shield, you cannot crit on him, etc. So that's very interesting. He's going to stay alive, even against Taras and many other crazy champions. Then we have an HP aura for arena battles, 35%. Pretty damn disgusting. So what about this champion doesn't sound good, right? Now, there is a bit of an issue when we are talking about multipliers. So let me just quickly actually get a get the multipliers so how you may notice right here on the a1 we have a 0 0.22 hp on the a2 we have a 0 0.3 hp on the a3 we have a 0 0.26 which is the aoe and the secret skill has a 0 0.36 okay this doesn't sound insanely 
amazing as a uh, as multipliers, you know. But considering that we ignore defense, we have so many things in the kit, you would still expect that for a void legendary, you will actually get a lot of a lot of value out of the champion, you know. So Fatalis, where are you? Or Fatalis, however they decided to call him. What I did, guys, I took the gear from my Taras, and I was kind enough to give it to this champion, okay? And total stats on him, we have 112k HP, 3.4k defense, 226 speed, a full crit rate, 297 crit damage. Now, of course, this champion has uh, no uh, awakening. He's uh, uh, not... Uh, uh, not running any blessing, he's not empowered, so all that does make a bit of a, a difference too. Which, of course, it will increase the stats on the champion uh, overall if you have any of those things. But let's actually quickly take him in for a, a run, test the damage as we usually do. Stage 23 on a, on the dragon, guys, and let's, let's see what he can do with defense down, weaken. Let's put all the right things on, you know, put all the right things on and see how how well we're going to perform. So I'm going to start with the AoE because we have all the champions lined up there perfectly. And I'm going to put it on 1x speed. Let's actually see the animations too. The champion does look awesome though. I love the design, you know. It reminds me of some MMO sort of game, you know. And yeah, I know it's coming with the armor from a Monster Hunter. But check this out. Now we barely, barely took... 50% down of the HP. I do have Helm Smasher as Masteries on him. I forgot to show that, but I'll show them in a second. So this is what sort of damage you would deal with some crazy gear on a Void Legendary, okay? And let's actually use the other skills because this was the A3. This didn't actually have the highest multipliers, you know? If we're going to hit a single target, okay? Attacks one enemy, will ignore a lot of uh, important buffs for Arena at the moment. 141k. Okay, -ish. let's just say that's not too bad. It should be more than enough to one-shot pretty much everyone except the uh, MK most probably, you know, <laughs> if we're talking about Arena. If we're talking about just in-game stuff, we're gonna... Let's go actually with uh, the basic skill. 131k, so the A1 hits very similar with A2. Of course, the A2 will ignore quite a few, quite a few things, you know, and I don't think... I'll be able to have the active skill in the next round. So I'm going to have to use it now. But basically, this is the skill right here. This does a lot of work. Ignores 50% of the target's defense, guys. Like, that, that's crazy already, okay? And this has the highest multipliers. 208k per hit. Man, the damage sucks, okay? I, I'm, I'm done with the part. Uh, I'm going to let you make your own opinion because you've seen it. You already probably... Uh, realize what's happening here. He sucks. And it's crazy to see that all the damage dealers for the last one year, they've been released with bad multipliers. We have uh, Lazarius, the mythical champion, which is awesome, but even he doesn't have amazing multipliers. And I gotta say it, every single one of the other damage dealers that were released in the game, they have weak multipliers. And yes, I understand, not every single one of these champions is meant to deal crazy damage. Not every single one of them is meant to be the next Georgian. But my god, is it ever going to come a new Georgian? Or a new Taras, you know? That's the whole thing. It's been over one year since they brought those champions in the Mera, and they clearly don't want them removed from there, because every single champion that is carrying release recently sucks, man. Like, look at this damage. A new Void Legendary. Like, honestly, it was a train of emotions with this champion, because as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh my god, finally. I messaged somebody from Platinum. I was like, guys, great job. The champion is, is, sounds amazing. 20 minutes later, I messaged them. This champion sucks, you know. Like you gave him poop multipliers again. So let me just show you another thing quickly. We have Magnar. I'm not even sure if he has full gear. I'll be very honest. Okay, we have almost full gear. 87 HP, 99 crit rate, 239 crit damage. I'm just hoping that he is on Savage, okay? I'm just hoping that he's on Savage. And let's actually see what a Magnar can do, you know? We don't need a, an HP Aura because that doesn't work here anyway. But our epic champion Magnar, okay? Because he's the easiest champion to kind of like compare him, uh, compare all the rest with, you know? We have this AoE skill. Attacks all enemies, 
places an extra hit on enemies without HP burn. A poor man's skill, okay? Let me put it like that. And then he comes in action. Magnar 1. My god. He dealt more damage than the new Void Legendary with half of the stats, okay? Literally almost half of the stats, okay? Almost half of the stats. Can you imagine if I put that gear on Magnar? I'm gonna embarrass that champion so bad that he will literally hide in the darkest corner in Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> so Magnar is already much, much better than that champion. With, the, with these stats, okay? He has literally uh, around 30k less HP and 70 less crit damage. And he deals more damage already. And it's not a thing of scratch, Helm Smasher proc, Helm Smasher didn't. I've tested him quite a bit, you know, and that's kind of like the limit that he can put in. Now, if we are going to take him in arena, because maybe, hey, what does scratch know about the game? These tests can be inaccurate. So we want to check him against a proper team in arena, because that's where we're going to see the true value of, uh, of a champion, you know. So I'm actually going to take the liberty to remove that... Uh, Wukong from there. I'm going to bring in a Sifi. I'm going to lock them. We're just going to use the general stuff that uh, I would be running uh, in a team, you know. And you know what? Let's let's take Cardial out now. Who needs Cardial? Let's bring in uh, Romantu. Let's bring in Romantu. Break all the passives. Make it, make it a bit easier, you know. So let's lock them all to ensure that we're not going to get clapped. Put a few buffs just to have a better survivability. Don't get polymorphed. Thank you so much. And right now... Right now, we can go in with this skill, okay? We can literally go in with the AoE attack. Let's see. So, we haven't... Uh, we haven't uh, hit crits on everybody. We did uh, hit Taras with a crit. And was pretty good damage on him. 64 k right? Something like that. Now, on the rest, of course, was not as great. But let's actually just wait a bit longer and see what's... Uh, what's going to happen, you know, so we have UDK, we got Polymorph finally, but we managed to land that defense down, that should be actually even more impactful, so right now we can go in with this skill, ignores everything known by, uh, by mankind, you know, 104k hit, we got a UDK down, but these are very disgusting stats, okay, and I'm not sure how good is this team, I, I, I even forgot who I'm, who I'm attacking right now, Okay, so Python survived the 29k hit, even though uh, he had no buffs or anything to give him extra damage. Taras survived again against his uh, AoE. The good part about HP-based nukers, guys, is that they are easier to, to keep alive, you know. I do prefer them. They are definitely the Mera, even for Live Arena, they're, they're absolutely essential. But man, this one kind of like, yeah, it's not, it's not gonna cut it in. It's not gonna cut it in, let's see. The secret skill, 85k. We managed to kill a 40% HP, uh, HP Python in there. That's good. And 52k, we got our ass down too. El Piero test. I have no idea who this person is. No, no offense to, to anyone. I'm not sure how good is his account. So I'm going to try to look for somebody that I know that has a, a, tankier, a, a tankier account. Where is, where is Victor test when you need him? Where is Victor Tess when you need him, you know? Or Murder Inc., but he's gonna lock me with his Warlord. That's gonna be a problem. Oh, Jacob, there we go. There we go. If you wanna, if you wanna see tankiness, come to this, uh, to this place, okay? We came to the right place. We came to the right place 100%. Lots of bolster, as, uh, as expected. And my god, I let it go on auto. Wait. And we don't have a preset, you know? So uh, Warlord is gonna, just gonna do his, uh, his bidding there. Let me just put it on a... On manual, lock them. Okay, there we go. So let's see how it will. Okay, that Duchess lost her uh, her reaction if she had any. We blocked their passive, so it doesn't really matter anyway. So right now we can actually use the AOE. I think it's it's better if we use the AOE. Okay, 57k. We broke the shield on that Duchess. Let's see. I'm waiting for uh, that uh, UDK to take a turn so we actually crit on him. Yo, what happened with this one? Didn't we just lock him? I'm a bit confused. Didn't we just lock that Rotos? <laughs> what happened? What happened, Rotos? Okay, so now we have the single target skill. This should hopefully kill that UDK. 
The thing is, we don't ignore shield. Uh, we lock his passive anyway. We could attack anyone, really. But I want to go for the IUDK anyway. So 58k and 18k after we broke the shield, right? If, I, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So the damage is not... Uh, it's not that crazy, you know? It's not that crazy for an HP-based champion. And not just an HP-based champion. It's a new Void Legendary that sounds crazy, crazy good on paper. To be more, more specific, okay? <laughs> Why was that on the shield? Because th that's something that I literally missed. <laughs> How many extra turns are you going to take? Thanks, God. Okay, second nuker, and we lost it. We lost it, okay? We are not able to, to kill that team. Locking them with a Warlord, re blocking their passives with Ramantu, and we are still not able to do any, any serious work against a team like that, you know? What about Farbstuff? Farbstuff has a pretty tanky team too, and uh, yeah, Ramantu is not really going to be very, very useful right here, so I'm going to go with an ally attack instead. Let's see. I would use Sam Wukong a bit more, but I changed the gear on him to have him for the... Amias, right, for the curse, Cursed Siri, and I never changed it back. So we can go with an ally attack and try to get that uh, Mitrala down. Okay, reaction, reaction. And we didn't hit reaction with his uh, skill, and we hit for 32k. Now, Duchess took a turn, so I want to use this skill. Ignore Stone Skin, increase defense, ally protection, strengthen. Was that it? This this feels like when I've seen uh, the very first time. Uh, what's his name? Uh, that leg that void legendary from uh, from the Silver Watchers. I literally forgot his name right now. Like honestly, uh, a bit a bit weird because that I, that I forgot his name. But you guys know who I'm talking about. And it felt like that when I saw him in action first time. Attacking champions under stone skin, you know, it felt like it barely scratched them. It barely scratched them. So slowly and surely we will take this team down. But honestly, man, it's not just me being, uh, being like negative about the champion. It's just he sucks so bad. Like he sounded so good on paper. I was honestly so, so excited. I know he's a new Void Legendary. I'm not really buying shards. I'm not really spending generally in raid for almost one year now. And I got excited anyway because, hey, something new that... Sounds like, wow, you know, something that's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to shift a bit the Mera. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create some new, some new fun. But unfortunately, it just doesn't feel like it's, it's going to, to be the case even with, uh, with this champion. Unless they are buffing the multipliers. But enough with me ranting and complaining about a new Void Legendary. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.